Welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about factoring cubic polynomials. That'd be this thingy, and the polynomials would be like whatever on the way down. So it starts with x to the third. Lots of terms in this one, and we're going to factor them by grouping. So let's just flip over and do some of them. Now, the reality is when you do this type of problem, the first thing that you want to do is look to see if they have any common factors that go all the way through, because you need to pull those out first. In this case, no. 7 and 5 don't work really that way. They have 1 in common, and there's no reason to pull a 1 out. So what we're going to do is look to see if we can uh, sort of organize the information in little subsets. If you'd seen factoring by grouping with quadratics, this makes a heck of a lot more sense. If you haven't, you know, maybe you should. So I'm going to look at the idea of these two and look at these two almost separately. So let me do 7m to the third minus 7m squared. And I'm actually going to do sort of a little bit of a trick here and make this one minus 5m minus 5. So what I'm doing is changing the signs, essentially. So I'm doing this. Now I want to look at the idea of uh, separating them out into little subgroups. Is there anything that goes into the 7n to the third minus 7m squared group? Absolutely. 7nm squared, both go into them. So I'm going to pull 7m squared out in front. When I do a little bit of division here, which is what I'm doing essentially, I'm never going to write that part again. I was just showing you where it's coming from. Uh, I end up with m is all that's left. And on the other side, once I take it away, I just end up with minus 1. Minus, um, when I look here, I know they have a 5 in common, so I'm going to pull the 5 out in front. And then I'm dealing with uh, 5 divided by 5 is, of course, 1, so I end up with 1. Uh, negative 5 divided by 5 is minus 1. And here's the part that matters the most. You can see that the parts are now in parentheses, or you should be able to see, assuming you can see. Um, because I, mean, I guess it's possible. Anyway, um, if you have the little parentheses, the m minus 1 part is the same for both. So I end up with 7m squared times m minus 1 and then minus 5 times m minus 1. The m minus 1 is a commonality. So what I'm going to do is write that down one time. I don't know why I switched back to writing lowercase letters, but I did, so I'm just going to stick with it. What I'm going to write in front of it is just the 7m squared minus 5, so this thing. And since nothing else can be done to it, 7m squared minus 5 can't be reduced, and m minus 1 can't be reduced, that's it, I'm done. Why can I write it like this? Because all I would be doing is going back and sending this times this and this times this. Well, if we were going to use distributive property or maybe FOIL, if you've heard it called that before, um, you're eventually going to multiply this times this and this times this. Same thing here, negative 5 times m, negative 5 times a negative 1. So it'll get you all the way back to the beginning of where you want it to go. The difference is this sort of gets us to a place where we can get a nice factored out answer that's already grouped together. So that's it by grouping. We're breaking into parts and sort of pulling out common factors separately. That's how that goes. Uh, let's look at another one. It's not really that hard to do these. It looks like it is, but it's really not. Now in this case, I do need to see, once again, if there's a common factor. Um, the answer to that is no, there's not, because the 5 ruins it like it does everything else. Not really. 5's all right, I guess. But uh, the 5 doesn't really go very smoothly with the uh, 6 and, not, and vice versa, that whole thing. Anyway, let's uh, see if we can get some sort of grouping going on. So I'll look at the first setup group. That orange was a lot to deal with, so I'm going to... And once again, I'm going to do a little trickery and sort of do 24x minus 20. It just makes the signs work out later. Okay, so in this case, I'm dealing with, is there anything that I can break out? Well, yeah, there's an x squared in both. So I'm going to pull x squared out and end up with 6x minus 5. On the other end of it, um, is there anything that they have in common? Yeah, they have 4 in common, so 4 comes out. 24 divided by 4 is 6x. 20 divided by 4 is, or negative 20 divided by 4 is minus 5. So once again, you're dealing with the idea of having that common uh, factored set. So 6x minus 5 goes into both. Sometimes people put that first. Sometimes you put the second term here, so x squared minus 4. 
doesn't really make any difference. It's commutative either way. It seems like we're done right now, but we're not done yet. Uh, there is one little piece of trickery that's left, a special case. You'll notice that x squared is a square and minus 4 uh, or 4 is a square and there's a minus between them, which means we can actually factor that one even further down. Anytime you have a square here, and if this was 4x squared we could do it again, or 9x squared either way, um, and a f square here and there's a minus here. The reason that it has to be a minus is because signs in the middle have to cancel out so you don't end up with sort of a, a middle term. But in this case, yes, we can factor it down even further. So you just take the square root, so you end up with x, uh, and take the square root of 4, which is 2 have one that's positive and one that's negative and then you just bring down the 6x six, six minus 5. Now it's all the way factored out as far as it would go. Well, What happens to the x term here? Well, minus 2x and plus 2x cancel, so it actually just goes away. Uh, I think I have video on that as well somewhere, but and billions of people made video about it. I'm not like I'm special or anything. So here's that, what that looks like. As you can see, they did it in a different order. It doesn't matter. You can put any of these three in any order that you want as long as you keep them in the same parentheses sets. It's commutative. It doesn't make any difference. Um, unless your teacher says that it does and just do what they say. I know that's a horrible and a terrible way to have to go about doing things, but sometimes you just have to do things because people want you to do them. Uh, you know, whatever it is, it is. So from here, I need to see if there's any sort of common factor because, quite frankly, this thing is a beast. So I'm going to do a quick in my head set of uh, does this go into it, does this go into it. Four goes into all of them. So let's pull four out first and see if that uh, really goes anywhere. Actually, I think we could pull 8 out, so let's pull it 8. By the way, all I'm doing is I'm doing like factors of 128. Like I'll do 128 and I'll divide by a bunch of numbers. And I'll know that 128 divided by uh, 8 is 16. And I know 160 divided by 8 is 20. And then I know that 200 divided by 8 is 25. So let's try that and see if it gets us anywhere. So I do this and end up with 16b to the third plus 20b squared minus 20b minus 25. And now from here I need to look to see if there are any common factors still remaining and that would mean that a 5 or a 25 would have to go into all those other numbers and it just doesn't happen that way so we're good to go. So from here this 8 will stay on forever and ever anon but I'm going to do a little bit of uh, mixed grouping. So I'll deal with 16b to the third plus 20b squared. And once again, I'm going to do that thing that I did before, <clears throat> make this positive b. But if I do that, I have to do this one as well. Or positive 20b, I should say. Now I'm going to look for uh, any common factors in each set. Well, they both have 4 in them here. And also uh, b squared would be a component of both. So 4 b squared, I bring that out, I'm left with 4b plus 5. On this side, <clears throat> the common factor is probably going to be 5. Now, um, you can see that the 4b plus 5 is in common to both. and uh, 4b squared and then I have the 8 left over. So let's check that one to see if I'm right and yeah, it's good. I swear I miss these more often than you would think so I do check it for a legitimate reason. And the last one we're going to see uh, what goes into these numbers. Well 4 obviously goes into all of them. Uh, 20, 6 doesn't go into 20 so I'm going to say that 4 is probably the thing that we're going to pop out of the front there. So 4 gives me 25 into the third power minus 5n squared plus um, 20, no sorry, 15n minus 3. So I'm going to look to see, okay, here's my little subgroups.
finally one I don't have to do anything weird to. I put them in brackets now for just visual purposes. So in this case, in the first set, I know 5 goes into both and so does n squared. And that would leave me with uh, 5n minus 1. And on the other side of it, I know 3 goes into both. And 15 divided by 3 is 5n minus 1. See the common part that they both have? So you end up with 5n minus 1 times uh, 5n squared plus 3. And you just want to tack that 4 on the front. That's fine, too. So there's the setup. It's not really super difficult to do them. It's actually easier, probably, to do them uh, with this uh, cubic polynomial than it is to do with uh, ones where you just have a quadratic, because you don't have to split the middle term or anything weird. So that's it, factoring by grouping for cubic polynomials.